My name is Paul Church from Clarity here in the UK. Welcome to another episode of Groovy Tuesday. I hope everybody's well today. I can see we've got the lovely Karen already over on YouTube. So good morning, Karen. Um, wait for a few people to pull up a chair, get comfortable, find the room, um, make a tea or a coffee, whichever. I've got my coffee on the go. Good morning, Mo, over on Facebook. I hope everybody's well this morning. I can see we've got eyes coming in and all of a sudden the chatter will go bing, 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 bing. So that's from Sue. Sue said the sound is all good. Thank you, Sue. Lovely Sue's in the room with you this morning. So if you have any questions, she's there to help. Good morning, Ian. There we go, Clarity Sue. Happy Groovy Tuesday. Jill, Sharon, everybody's coming in. Welcome. So, lovely Lillian, Susan. So what's the weather like for everyone today? It's, um, it's sunny at the moment, but I know that they're forecasting rain later today. So, um, so we'll just make the most of it, won't we? Stay in and craft. Don't need to go out and get wet, do we? So good morning, Sheila, Sue, Bernie. There we go. Everybody's coming in. See, it doesn't take long, does it, to, to find the room, pull up a chair, get comfortable. Um, Gillian, good morning. There we go. It's lovely to have everybody's company. Dole with Lillian. Lillian, remind me where you are again. Um, I'm fine with all like the names as they pop up. I can never remember where anybody is. Whether you're in the UK, um, partly sunny with Mo in Ripon, sunny in Kings Ling. Um, sunny for how long exactly, Susan? Um, I think they're sort of, it's typical, isn't it? Bank holiday weekend coming up and what's the weather going to be like? So, um, yeah, typically it's normally sort of wet and dreary, isn't it? And, until you get sort of later in the year with the bank holidays with August, sometimes we can be lucky with that. <laughs> Good morning, Richard. There we go, everyone's coming. Lovely and sunny in West Berkshire so far. Well, let's just sort of keep the sun with everybody, shall we? Margaret is in South Africa. SA, is that South Africa, Margaret? I'm guessing that is. And Lillian's in Gateshead. Top of the hill, top of the hill. <laughs> I'm guessing there must be a famous hill up there. So, what's the bank holiday? I know, I know it's strange, isn't it? Well, it's come around rather, I think it's Easter earlier this year, I'm not sure. Um, Margaret, yes, is in South Africa. Welcome, what time is it in South Africa? Um, see, I love this, it's international. We can go UK and we can go worldwide, so. Gloucester we've got there. Good morning, Sandra. There we go. Everyone's pulling up a chair. So my mic pack sort of sticking my back. I don't know. I should have just put it off to the oh, put it off to the side. Clips just come off now. Bear with. I think nowadays, look how bulky the mic pack is. It's 12 noon in South Africa. Perfect stop for lunchtime and then, isn't it? I'm going to pop this. Maybe I'll pop this on the side, see whether that's any better. Okay. Hopefully I haven't disconnected anything. So how's everybody doing? Hope everybody's been keeping well. Um, this is part two of, um, we're looking at Jane's Groovy Floral Sampler. So if you're new to Groovy Tuesday, welcome. You can go back and watch all of the previous 135 episodes. Um, if you're looking for something to do and to while away a few hours. Um, so, as I say, we've been looking at this plate here, which we launched earlier this month. Yeah, it was earlier this month, I think. I've forgotten what month, week, day, who knows. Um, so this is an A4 plate, and it's uh, the illustrations are from the lovely um, Jane Nestorenko. And what Jazz did, she turned it into a fantastic A4 sampler. So she miniaturized the various different flowers that Jane had illustrated. So we have the dahlia, then we've got the lovely English rose, then we have the fuchsia, the agapanthus, 
then we have our holly and ivy and then finally the poinsettia so it's a plate that will carry you throughout the year um, and also it has these lovely little frames with sentiments in there as well um, so really sort of useful and it doesn't matter what level of parching you're at then this plate is perfect for everybody and i thought that this plate is is a great opportunity to maybe improve or sort of learn some of the new different sort of parching skills if you're fairly new to groovy and when you just trace it out exactly how it comes you can see the detail is not lost even though jazz has worked her magic and miniaturized them so let's have a look at some artwork from the design team so this piece here so i love it just the four squares um using just the dahlias and the butterfly and a little sentiment. So this one was created by Josie. Then we have this one here that incorporates the larger, the original artwork from Jane, and then the little um, sampler rose as well. So this one was from Glynis. Then I'm tell you what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna zoom in a little bit now, because I think we're, we're fine. We've had a look at the, the A4 plates. Let's zoom in a little bit so we can really admire in detail this beautiful artwork. So, good morning, Jane. Good morning, Colin. I'm sure you're listening in the background. I hope you're keeping out of trouble. Um, this one is by Francis. Look at that. This lovely Pico cutting. Ooh, it's like a quilt, isn't it? And then the next one is from Glynis. So this is using one of Linda Williams' one, two, three, not one, two, three, one of Linda Williams' um, easy layout plates to create the different sections. That little butterfly, even been Pico cut. Gorgeous. I don't think mine would have a little tendrils. Uh, <laughs> And then we've got another piece by Josie. So Josie's taken the centerpiece, the little agapanthus, and then used the original agapanthus to frame. I, I, for me, that's sort of like my pattern building. Um, and I, I that I would love to recreate that. And you know what? With the groovy system, it is so achievable. It really is. Then we've got another traditional piece here from Francis, taking those lovely rose sprays and coloured in in a traditional style. And you can see when we're looking at it that you can create beautiful pieces of artwork of, of any size, um, whether you go for sort of like 8 by 8 7 by 7 6 by 6 but maybe you just want to go a little bit smaller. So this one here is from Glynis. Yep, Glynis, just taking that rose taking um, a lovely frame to go around there, some lovely little um, multi-needle tool techniques there. So, and then this one from Julie Campbell. This is um, using the latest release in our nested doodle dies. So this was a circular collection of frames and panels. Doesn't it frame it beautifully? Gives it that little finishing touch and when you combine it with the design of paper and parchment, the color tones really work fantastically. Then we have another piece from Glynis, just like so. Um, and then the final piece is from Karen Jackson. And this is sort of white work at its best. And I thought we would sort of try and replicate that. Not try, we can. We can definitely replicate that. Um, and we made a start on it last week, didn't we, by tracing out the, the different elements of it. Um, so let's see, a question from Sue. How are the parched pieces stitched onto the book you showed from Bernie? Book, what book was that one? I'm not sure which piece. Do you mean this lovely little um, piece of art? I say little. This piece of artwork 
from um, this is from Carol Baker and we indulged with this last week didn't we and we sort of digressed and um, let me just take this out and we digressed and we looked at how this was created and we had some top tips from some of our fellow design team members that was obvious really wasn't it but um, didn't really think about it at the time because it was sort of off the cuff so you can create a lovely type of star book if you wanted to but this is say this one so the question was how is it all attached so what um carol's done she's just put a little stitch in each of the four corners with an invisible thread or white cotton um just to attach them all in place onto a piece of card and then used our doodle frame it some panels to create the frames around them and i'm guessing carol probably used up all her different scraps of papers and then sort of complemented the coloring in to match with her backing papers then a bit of those metallic gel pens there on that butterfly i spy um yeah and it, it's like it's a great way of using up all your sort of little off cuts isn't it um to create all these little pieces and these have all been pico cut um, using the Pico dies. So they work beautifully with those as well. Okay, so the artwork Bernie, is on both sides. So what um, Carol's done, we had a look last week, didn't we? Where we took, um, we took a craft card, cut it in half, and then you sort of fold it back like so this is where i had my dodgy trimmer do you remember and you fold it back like that so your pieces of artwork are attached and then just like so i know we went through it in a lot more detail last week and then that was then attached like that to create your concertina okay so i would say they're done individually and then all attached to the structure so that's what we was having a look at last week. And if you wanted to, you could go back and watch last week's episode. Um, last week seems like such a long time ago, doesn't it? Um, but yeah, I know we definitely, we spent some time on it because I think the lovely Jane had the, the idea of taking the car, cutting it in half. It was a six by six, wasn't it? Yeah. So let me pop this artwork somewhere safe. Just pop that over there. I'm just going to bring this piece of artwork back. <coughs> Excuse me. So this is what we were sort of aiming towards. Um, and basically, we decided that, first of all, I showed you how to get your spacing equal between each of the squares. That's how it comes on the plate. Then we looked at how we could create narrow sections in between and then how we could create wider sections in between so if you wanted to you could be exactly precise so that it all looked equal so we looked at that last week and then what we did was we took the dahlia because i thought this is a great one to practice and we've got this from karen as a comparison Okay, and what we did was we traced out with the number one tool, number two, the number three, and the number four. I think you can just about see the number four, can't you? If I bring that up, and there was a bit that I missed, do you remember? Did I go back and put it in? I don't think I did, did I? There was a, a petal missing from there. So let me just go back in and pop that in whilst we're all pulling up a chair and getting comfortable. So I'm going to bring the plate back into play. That is going to line up with the square. Because it's so faint, it won't go back into the grooves because I haven't created the grooves in order for it to re-slot. So what I've got to do 
is rely on the outer square as for my positioning. And then all we're going to do now, so which one was it? It was these ones here. So the number four tool, and we're just going to trace out. So we're working on the back still, and we're just going to trace out with the number four ball tool. And because it has the largest ball on it, it won't go into the groove as much. So therefore, it doesn't stretch the parchment. So this is a great way of sort of having this, this little section here as a sampler to practice your different techniques. So for this part, what we're going to do, we're going to use this to practice our white work. And then in a couple of weeks, we'll maybe choose a different flower, do the same type of technique where we go one, two, three, four with the different tools. And then we'd look at some coloring and whether we go with the pencils, like the Perga liner pencils, or we go with the Perga color pens, or maybe the dorso crayons, um, just to try some different techniques and some comparisons. So maybe you've only got the pencils and you're interested in the pens, so we can see how the pens work. Or maybe you've got the pens and you want to see um, how the pencils work. And don't forget, if you've got any questions whatsoever, no question within reason <laughs> is a silly question. <laughs> Sue, careful what you ask, please. Um, Sue can often ask, no, Sue never asks a silly question. So, so yeah, so it's lovely to have, I've got Humberta all the way from the States. Good morning. Um, I haven't seen Mr. Ken in the room today. Is Mr. Ken AWOL? I can see we've got lovely Jane and Glynis in the room. Um, who else from the design team have we got in there? We've normally got a few people in there. We've normally got um, Josie and sometimes Carol Baker's in the room as well. Okay, All right, I think we're, we're good to go. I've got lots to tell you um, about different bits and pieces. Okay, but um, Ken is listening, he's driving. <laughs> okay, hello Ken, drive safely, don't get distracted. Right, okay. So, as I said last week, we decided to trace out using the four different tools, okay? And you can see, now it doesn't matter what level you're at. Maybe you just want to stick with the, the number one tool. Um, Deborah, question, can we have a sneaky peek of what's on TV this week? Of course you can. It wouldn't be a groovy Tuesday without a groovy sneaky peek, would it? But the thing is, you have to be good. You have to be behaving in the room, okay? <laughs> uh, Josie isn't here, she's got visitors. Okie dokie. Right, okay. I'm sure you will all behave. So just to recap, we took four squares. We traced out the number one, the number two, the number three, and the number four, okay? And if we take this lovely piece of artwork that Karen has created, I'm guessing that what Karen did, if I bring this in on this camera, let me get it into focus. There we go. I'm guessing what Karen did in certain areas, if I bring, let's have a look. So if I bring this in, you can see that there isn't really a solid outline isn't there but she's created the shade and the depth to it the shadow and the only place that there's really any sort of fine lines but that's definitely not a number one tool is more in the sort of central area of the design okay so there's different ways that we can um, try to achieve this level of white work okay so if you're new to the Groovy system, then you're likely to have the A4 black mat. I work on an A3 black mat because it gives me a larger um, work surface to work on. Um, but if you're new, then the A4 black mat is perfect for that because it's hard on one side for tracing out and then it's soft and squidgy on the other side, okay? And then as you progress through the various different technique, techniques, 
techniques, then you may want to invest in one of my best friends, um, which is the Pergamano embossing mat. Excellent. Okay, so we'll have a look at both of them during the course of this hour. So see whether you're humming and hawing. The pink mat is, for me, is my safety net, like the groovy plate is for my line art. It's great if you're heavy handed, but also if you're light handed as well. Okay, and I'm sure that the ladies from the design team or many of our friends at home that have already got them will be able to sort of tell you what they think about it as well. Okay, so just to start off with, what we're going to do, we're going to go with the black mat. Okay, so I've turned it over to the squidgy side. Now, when I take, um, uh, say, the shade at all, and I press in, I probably can't see, hang on a minute. You can see how it sort of it squidges in, okay, because so, it's nice and soft. Now, this is where you have to learn the control to how to apply your pressure. So rather than go direct into your artwork, what you may want to do is warm up first. Okay, I know Linda Williams often says that before she starts to do to build up her layers of white work, she warms up on a scrap piece of parchment to get the hand flow in and to work out the pressure. Because sometimes we'll go heavy and sometimes we'll go lighter. Depends on the mood that we're in, really. Now, I'm pleased to say that we've finally got back in stock. Ta-da! We have the three mil bottle and the 4.5. So they're back in stock as well. So if you've been waiting for those, then there you go. So there's so there's my here we go. Three, four point five, and six. So these are sort of like your your essentials really when it comes to your basic um, white work. And they increase in size from the groovy tools. Okay. So as you progress, <coughs> excuse me. And you think, right, okay, I'm really getting the hang of this white work, but now I want to sort of improve it slightly, then this is where the larger bottles, and the six mil, Linda says, um, is her best friend. And we got the um, the largest of the bottle, um, shader tools back in stock, and the other ones are just around the corner. Okay, and as Richard said, the shading tool is definitely a game changer for white work. And I sort of, I agree, it can, you can get, um, I suppose, more control. Um, I don't know, it, I suppose it's what you get used to, isn't it? Um, so, so yeah. So, but I say, they're back in stock and lovely Sue's pop those links up for you. So you've got the three and the 4.5 back in stock. So just saying. Okay. So I'm going to go with, ooh, we're going to do a comparison. Okay. I'm going to go with the six, the four and a half, and the three. And we're going to start with those ones first. Okay. Now, if you're worried about doing your white work for the first time, as I say, Take a piece of scrap paper, make sure you wipe it with your tumble dry sheet, like so, okay. And then just get a feel of the tool and look at the size of the, the tool, the ball tool in which you're working, okay. So for example, if I'm going to, let me see, what shall I do? I'm gonna put, straight line in, well, straight-ish. I'm going to do a couple, okay, like so. So this is sort of, imagine this here, this is magnified, okay. All right, so let's do it this way then. There we go. So that's my petal. My biggest mistake that I used to make when using the ball tools was I would put the back of the ball tool. Let me, I'm going to come in really close on this because I think it will help. <coughs> so let me zoom back in. 
you come in nice and slow. Hopefully I can get in fairly close. Ooh, that it doesn't go blurry when I start moving. Okay, so when I first started using the ball tools, I thought that the back of the tool, because obviously I'm sitting here, I'm here, so this is the back. I would put that in line with just inside the line. I don't know if you can see that. There we go. So I would put that just inside the line art. Okay. And then by doing that, when I would then stroke out, I'm going on really heavy so you can sort of see what I'm doing. I would get a gap in between the solid line and where I wanted my white work to start. So what I had to do was adjust my way of thinking, okay? So this time you need to look at the ball and you need to sort of find the middle-ish, okay, of the ball. And then when you press out, you wouldn't be going on as heavy as this and you wouldn't be going as white. You'd be building this up gradually. So it wouldn't be as obvious as you're building it up. So now what I'm doing is I'm keeping the ball on that line, okay? So I no longer have a gap in between my line art and the ball tool, okay? Now if I go, let's do another one, and I take my shading tool, now I prefer to flick towards me with the shading tool, okay? So if I turn it round towards me, now with the shader tool, I can see that the edge of the shader tool is actually on the line. Okay, so as I bring it towards me, I'm on the line, okay? So it's all about sort of just practicing first. So What's the lovely Jane saying? She said, if you've done the embossing with the number one or the number two tool, you can fill the ball tool slot into the embossed line. If you've used a three or a four tool, it's more difficult to fill. Yeah, absolutely. Because as, as Jane's saying, like on this one here, if I take that larger ball, I can feel the, the indentation, okay? So, so it's all about practicing, or not practicing. Just do this to start with. Just take a scrap piece of parchment. Oh, I went too heavy. I forgot I was on the soft mat. Go like that. Get used to the positioning of, go on heavy. Um, go on heavy so you can see where the ball is actually sitting. Okay, I don't know if I'll get it better on this camera let me try so if I come over here there's a line there so you can see hang on this way see how the ball is sitting on the middle of that line so now when I go outwards I'm on the line but if I put the back of the ball on the line and I strike out, then I've got a gap, okay? So, another top tip, if you're unsure as well when it comes to doing the white work, if you're using the black mat, I know I've come in really, really close on this, um, is, hang on, let me, so working on the soft mat, okay, as you start to build up your techniques, then if you take a cello bag, so you know what your groovy plate comes in, just chop it up, single layer, and place that onto your black mat, okay? Just like so. And what it does, it helps resist the pressure you're applying. So it's a good way, it's sort of, a, for me, it's an in-between using the black mat naked, then you put a, a protective covering on using the cello bag, or if you want full protection, so to speak, 
then the pink mat, okay? Now, you can still put too much pressure on when you're using the pink mat, and you can still go through the parchment. So don't think, oh, Paul said it's fully protected, then I'm not going to do it. You can, and I've done it myself. So just be aware of the vet, of just the pressure, really. Okay, so if I come back to this one, so I'm leaving the cello bag in place. Okay, and um, what I'm going to do first, I'm going to have a slurp of coffee. Good evening, Mr. Ken. Okay. Glad you could join us. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to start with the biggest ball tool. Okay. And I'm going to put into practice exactly um, why Jane said, if you want double, double protection, pink mat with the cello bag to be certain. <laughs> I've never tried the, the cello bag on there. Okay. Now, when it comes to white work, this is where you have to learn to be patient. Okay. So... This is where you have to accept that it takes as long as it takes, okay? I didn't at the beginning. I wanted white instantly, just like the line art. Um, and so I used to get frustrated with it. And then I'd get the white pencil out and colour it in. And think, oh, that'll do. You, it is. The more, um, I won't say the more patience you have, but the more of an understanding and acceptance, really, that if you want to get that lovely look that Karen has created, then you do have to let it build up in the layers. And you do have to sort of take your time. Um, Deb says she doesn't do patience. <laughs> I know, but you know what? It'll be worth it in the end. Okay, it really, really is. So, what we're going to do first, I'm going to take a pencil, okay, and one that's got some lead in it, hang on a minute, okay, and I'm going to put a star here, because what I'm going to do, I'm going to start this side of the stalk, and I'm going to work all the way around, and then I'm going to stop. So I then know that um, I've done one complete layer. Okay. So I'm going to start here. Remembering the where we're positioning the ball tool. And you must think, oh, wow, that six mil ball tool is way too big. Linda would say, the bigger the ball, the better. And it all relies on sort of... I mean, I wouldn't really go in here with the six mil ball tool because it's not really going to do anything, okay? So now what we're going to do with this line here on my finger is the line of the artwork and we're going to go and then we're going to strike away, lift off like an aeroplane, take it off, okay? So gently... And it really doesn't look as if I'm doing anything, okay? And you might just be able to very subtly see that it has changed colour slightly, okay? And we're going to do the same on the next one. And I'm going to start from the bottom and just gradually work up, okay? Patience, nice and calm. And we're not hoping to do anything on this first layer. What we're doing is we're putting sort of like a, an undercoat down, just to gently tease the fibers of the parchment. Okay, so we're going to carry our way round. So some of our friends at home tend to, tend to like to flick away. 
some like to flick towards. As far as I'm aware, there's no rules to say you've got to do it in any particular direction. It is what feels comfortable for you. Okay. There we go. So we're slowly working our way around. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to turn my work so it's comfortable for me. So I'm following the direction of the petals. Okay. So, what have I got to tell you this week? So, oh, those elephants in the shack with Bob yesterday. Aren't they fantastic? That E, absolutely love that E. And then the Picasso elephant, that was great. Um, absolutely love that. Um, I've, for many, 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 many years, um, I've collected elephants. I've got a very big garden. No. <laughs> I think it probably started, I think, in my early 20s. Um, and um, I've got all different, I was going to say shapes and sizes, but some of them are um, different shapes. And I've got them in china, I've got them in glass, I've got them in stone, I've got them in wood. Um, and um, most of them now, sadly, are up in the loft because my collection grew so big. Yeah, I know, there's a strong ceiling. Um, yeah, I must have, I think I've probably got... I would say, oh, in the region of two to three hundred elephants. Um, yeah, I've got some out on display, all with their trunks facing the door, because um, apparently that's what you're meant to do. Okay, so we're slowly working our way round. Um, so yeah, so the shack was fantastic yesterday. Um, and how to draw sort of Picasso's elephant as well. And it would be great to see how everyone gets up on drawing, um, <coughs> excuse me, drawing a more traditional looking elephant. I know I was reading the comments yesterday, everyone was going into panic mode. Um, but the only thing that I, not the only thing, um, it was sort of, or elephants is like Nelly the Elephant song. Um, kept thinking of that song. And believe it or not, <laughs> I've never ever watched Dumbo. I know, I know. Never watched it. I've seen clips of it, but I've never sat down to watch Dumbo. Maybe over the Easter holidays, I'll um, I'll try and find it somewhere and watch it. Isn't it funny? Certain, everybody's um, watched certain films, but yeah. So um, so yeah. So that was the, the shack yesterday. That I, I loved it. Absolutely loved it. Um, then obviously today we're in Groovy Tuesday, and if you're tuning in afterwards, welcome, whatever day it is you're tuning in to play catch up with. Um, then tomorrow I'm heading up to TV Land, they had a, a cancellation and asked if we could help out. So um, I am on tomorrow, which is Wednesday at 4 p.m. and 8 p.m. and then bright and early Thursday morning at 8 a.m. So, um, so yeah, and I'll give you a, a sneaky peek of what's coming up on that shortly. So you can see, I, can you see, if I bring this up close, 
can you see it's very, very subtle. We're still working on the back. I wonder if I flick it over, whether you can see. Yeah, you can, can't you? Especially in this area here, I think I went a little bit too heavy in that area. Okay. <laughs> Leon says, glad that elephants don't fly. Yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah, so, so that's the, the first layer. Okay, right. So while this first layer is resting, let's have a look at what I'm gonna be showcasing on TV. Now, for many of our friends at home, you'll already be familiar with the designs. But when we were looking through, um, which way am I going? I'm going to zoom out now. Oh, wrong way. I've got a great big sign in front of me saying which way to do it, and I still do it wrong. Um, okay, a bit too much. There we go. Okay, so let's pop this to one side. So, so many of our friends at home will already be familiar with the signs. It's from Linda Williams, and it's called In the Garden Collection. And it was a series of plates that Linda launched over a period of time. And they're just perfect for so many different occasions. But guess the name, they're all about being in the garden. So bank holiday weekend coming up, most people, if the weather's good, will be out in the garden. So this is great. So... We've got nine different designs and they're all A5 plates, okay? So this is the hammock. They all have fantastic frames. I'd forgotten about that. The frames and the corners and the elephant. And the elephants? <laughs> I've got elephants on the brain. Okay, I don't want elephants on the brain. But look, hats, the hammocks. So that's the first one. Then we have the, the floral stairs, live on the sunny side, the wrought iron chair, the window box with the flowers, the bunting, lovely. I mean, you could just take these little vases of flowers and just do them in, in a cart. Then we have the greenhouse and we've got wisteria up there. We've got the watering can lovely sort of reclining chair there, cup of coffee, having a break. And this one comes with a, a colouring guide, which I will be showcasing on um, Wednesday, tomorrow. Probably do that in the eight o'clock show, I reckon. Then we have the deck chairs. So this, I don't know why, this reminds me of sort of like, not sitting at the beach, but sitting in a park somewhere. I'm thinking sort of Hyde Park. I don't know why. Um, then we have the garden swing. Lovely. This one. little cat down there. Lanterns with the little birds and the foliage. Serenity and joy. Then we have the garden shed. So you've got all your veg there, your trees growing, your brush for sweeping up. Then the next one is the lemon tree. Lemon tree garden, lovely lemon tree, the parasol, the summer house. Maybe you've got a summer house like this where you do all your crafting. Um, so that's a lovely one. But look, you can take, don't forget all these fantastic frames around the outside. Then we have the rose arch. So for me, in a way, this is sort of like two separate plates. You've got the rose arch there, and then you've got the, the lovely birdhouse with the foliage, or not birdhouse, yeah, the dove house. You've got the doves, you've got the bees, you've got the little ducks quacking and waddling away. But this one also is sort of two parts. You've got that one, and you've got that one. So it's scenes within scenes, isn't it? And then the final one in the collection are the wicker chairs. So this for me is sort of like, you've got your um, iced tea in a jug or your pims when it comes to watching the tennis. You've got a little dog down there as well. There's all these little characters in all the different plates. The um, garden lights, the lovely sort of willow type tree. So they're the, 
the nine different designs I'll be showcasing. So say, some of you may not have seen them before. I mean, you may have seen them on the website, but you haven't necessarily seen them um, on TV because it was back in June 2022 was the last time they went to air. Now, this is artwork from Linda and Lynn Jackson. Okay. So this, I'm going to bring this in on this camera. Look at the greenhouse and the foliage. It gives that lovely clouded effect. And I'll be showing you how that is created. And that comes with that printout to give you your pattern for the foliage on that one, on the greenhouse. So you've got that piece of artwork there. Then you've got the lovely deck chair, um, the flowers on here. These are also on that particular printout as well. The lovely tree, look at the frames again around the outside. Then garden swing. So this is done in more of a, a traditional style where the only sort of real groovy line art that you can see is the chain. Okay. Then like this one, when life gives you lemons, make lemonade. Isn't that perfect? Beautiful sort of spring day, the lemons in the trees and little woody cats out in the garden. Then look, different sizes. So you could just take, do you remember on that plate? Um, that just so you could just take the um, watering can, the fork, the flowers, and just create a, a unique piece of artwork. This is lovely. This is like a quilt, isn't it? So you've got the lovely wick chair, and then creating that frame around the outside. And that frame has been created using the frame from um, the plate. Then there we go, wicker chair with your lemon tea or lemonade. Um, use it on a lovely ivory parchment. Then combining it with other plates. So this is using the entwined reef plates from Barbara. You've got the sort of like the, the man, yeah, look, man cave. Could be woman's cave, dad's cave, uncle's cave. Um, Really, really love it. I mean, look at that pico cutting. Oh, goodness me. Then there we go. A nice, fresh, zesty one here. Time to relax with the lemon tree using the entwined um, wreaths again from Barbara. Okay. And then the final piece is a hammock. And this has all been pico cut away to reveal the designer paper behind it and you've got the little dog in the hammock okay. beautiful 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 artwork so um so yes so <coughs> excuse me so that's what i'll be doing on tv tomorrow at four o'clock eight o'clock and then 8 a.m thursday morning it's weird with it being bank holiday friday i'm sort of and it's not a show we would normally do, so you just sort of just get out of sync. Um, what else have I got on my list to tell you? So, and then on Thursday night, you've then got the shack, you're gonna carry on with those elephants. I was gonna do an elephant impersonation then, but I won't, no. I'll leave that to your imagination. <laughs> okay. <laughs> right, let's bring this piece of artwork back in. Now, ideally, you would let that rest for a little bit longer than sort of five, 10 minutes, okay? I'm gonna zoom back in again now. So let's come in slowly. There we go, got it right this time. Okay. And then don't forget, obviously we've got our open day tickets available for two fun field days in June. We have our summer retreats in August. Um, right, I'm gonna, stick with the number six tool and I'm going to repeat the process all the way around for a second time. Um, then we have our fantastic parchment retreat in October at the Spa Hotel in Royal Tunbridge Wells. Um, so all the information is on our 
website. I'm sure Sue can pop a link up to those. There we go, she's already done that. Thank you, Sue. Um, but if you've got any questions, then you can ask away and Sue will be there to help. So you can either call the office or drop Sue an email. Sue, what's the best email for people to reach out to if they've got a query regarding the retreats or the open days? So now we're just slowly building up the layers. Okay. And you'll notice um, that your voice will slow down. <laughs> but you're probably not talking, are you, whilst you're, you're doing this? You're just lost in the process and enjoying it. Okay. There we go. So yeah, so there's there's lots going on. Um, I don't know many of our friends live a fair distance, but I also know many of our friends, um, especially in the open days, or any of the, because the open days are for two days, the retreats are for two days, and uh, some people sort of make a sort of like a, a little mini break, come down with friends or their other halves, um, the other halves go off wandering. There's some lovely places to vis visit near Ditton, where the open days and the summer retreats are held. And there's some lovely places to visit in Tunbridge Wells and near surrounding areas as well. So, um, so yeah. And they're just... For me, the open days, I know I'm, I'm slightly biased. Um, I remember when I first got into crafting and um, the first time I went to the NEC, wow, that was mad. Um, but it was, it was overpowering because there was too much to see there was too many people. Um, you had to pay for parking. You had to pay to get in. Um, and I, I heard recently, um, I was talking to a few people um, in the green room up at the TV last week. And they were saying it was like £18 to park at the NEC. Um, and then £12 to get in. And that's without any petrol of getting there. Um, and our lovely little event is £8 for the day. Free parking. Lots of giveaways. Lots of entertainments. Make and takes. Um, yeah. So when you, I suppose it depends how far you're traveling, doesn't it? Um, I suppose if you're gonna come for two days and you've got to take into account the cost of accommodation, but it's not expensive for a couple of nights. Okay. Can you hear that noise? Because I've gone too heavy, it's buckling a little bit, okay? <coughs> Excuse me. So I just need to be aware of that. Just on that one, I obviously went in a little bit too heavy on that particular area. Okay. So I say this is one of those processes that you have to allow to take, to take its time. Well, we can automatic, automatically, but we can really start to see um, it starting to sort of build up, okay? So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna leave that one for now, okay? And then I'm gonna take my pencil, and now I'm gonna put a pencil line over on this one. And then for this one, I'm gonna use the shader tool. So this one I'm gonna do completely using the ball tools from the six, the four and a half, the three, and then downwards. 
And then on this one, I'm going to go for the shader tool. Okay. So as I say, I prefer the shader tool to bring it towards me. So I'm going to turn my picture upside down. So it's still that process of putting an undercoat down first. Okay. Just like so. There we go. We don't want to turn it white yet. We want to just put like the gray work on it, the undercoat down, don't we? Now my artwork is going to be left now until next week. I'm not going to do anything until we're back together next Tuesday. And then we'll see what happens, how it sort of, a week is definitely plenty of time for it to have sort of bounced back for the for the next step. I'm not gonna say we're gonna do layer after layer and we're gonna take it week after week, um, but just as a, as a comparison to see as we start to, to add in that white work. And at the moment, we're working on two that have the most prominent line art as well. So when we finish both of these pieces, then what we can do is we can decide which technique we want to use, whether we want to use the shader tools or whether we want to use the ball tools. But the ball tools, especially for the, the smaller areas, um, say they've been out of stock for such a long time and Mr. Dave worked his magic and got them back into stock. I know many of our friends at home have been waiting patiently for them. So, we're just gently working our way around, just like so. And I, I have to be careful, because with a tendency with the shader tool, um, I tend to go on, not heavy, um, but I tend to want to turn it white quicker and I mustn't. See, so we're just gonna work our way around. And what you could do, I mean, if you're working on a piece, you could have a little tally chart next to it saying layer one, layer two, layer three. Because as you go around and you start to build up those layers, whiteness will intensify. Okay, so if I turn that over, I bring that up now. Very, very subtle. Very subtle. And at this point, this is where um, you can learn more of a control. So, um, for example, um, with the ball tools, um, where's that scrap piece of parchment? So with the ball tools, you sort of, you learn, um, there's, there's various different techniques, sort of like the shadow embossing, but if you wanted to get sort of like an even coverage, then what you do is you swing the tool. I'm gonna go on heavy. You swing the tool backwards and forwards because you're lifting, it's like a pendulum, you're lifting away at each end so that you don't, if you was just to go like that, I mean, I'm going really extreme now. If you go like that, you're gonna get a harsh edge to your piece of artwork. But what you do is you, you swing it like a, a pendulum, like so. So what's happening is it'll be whiter, more in the center, but you've, get, you've got that feathered edge to it. And this is all bits and pieces that I've learned from watching people, Barbara and Linda um, and Jane on the design team. Um, 
and it's just about sort of playing just take a piece of scrap parchment if you're new to it and just have a go see what happens if you you go on too heavy i know what will happen if you go on too heavy you'll go through and then you rip your parchment i mean that was really extreme that was extreme parching that was that <laughs> but when you turn it over oh it feels horrible really does even over here it doesn't feel very nice where i've gone on white instantly whereas when i come over here at this point in time all i can feel is the outline of the design itself so the idea is that when we look at this piece of artwork from karen is that you get that very soft raised and natural looking effect okay so maybe between now and next week, you, you want to just have a practice. Um, don't forget you've got Barb's blog, um, barbagrayblog.com, and then you've got the Clarity Matters blog. Um, every Sunday there's a step-by-step -step tutorial. Um, see, but now if I go back in and try and do this, I can really feel that I've ripped it now. I can feel the weakness in the parchment. Especially if you've got a harsh line around the outside and you, you bring the, the ball tool in, it's at that weakest point. This is the weakest point where that line's been created if you've used the number one and the number two tool. So as say Linda often says that before she goes in to create our pieces of artwork and masterpieces that we just looked at earlier, she warms up first. She makes sure that she's happy with the pressure that she's applying. Because say, one day you can be heavy handed, one day you could be light handed. It all depends on how, you, how you're feeling. You may be feeling, I want to get rid of this and oh, get it right, get it right. Or do you think, oh, let's enjoy the process and go make it turn white. So, um, so I hope you picked something up from today. <laughs> I've enjoyed myself anyway. Um, thank you to the lovely Sue, um, popping up all the links and the fantastic design team that are in the room. And, um, and as always for your company. So if I don't see you before, uh, if I don't see you on TV tomorrow at four o'clock and eight o'clock and then 8 a.m. on Thursday morning, then have a lovely Easter break if you're having a break. And I'll be back with you next Tuesday for Groovy Tuesday. So, but don't forget you've got the shack Thursday evening at seven with those elephants. There we go, I did it. Sad, I know. Enjoy the rest of your day. <laughs> Can't believe I just did that. Enjoy the rest of the day and um, I'll see you again next week. Take care now. Bye-bye.